Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about something called MLRS. Yep, I said that right. Not Express LRS, MLRS. The M standing for Mavlink. Now this is another LoRa-based radio system, but it's significantly different from Express LRS in a number of crucial ways. And I've been trying to find out a little bit more about the MLRS system, what it is and where I would potentially look at using it over Express LRS. Maytech have been making some hardware for it, although you don't need specific hardware like this. You can flash it onto just regular hardware that runs things like Express LRS. And I thought, let me see if I can figure this out and help share some of this information. Because I really struggled when I first started looking at this, figuring out what MLRS was and what the advantages were. And I need to say a massive thank you to one of the iNav developers, a very, very nice chap, very, very smart chap called Mark. Now, Mark has been playing with this stuff, and the iNav developers in particular have been goofing around with things like the airport mode in Express LRS, which is designed to send and receive the Mavlink stuff, and they found it had poor range, um, less than five kilometers, even in ideal conditions with the best setups. And also it was pretty slow. And iNav 8.0 is getting a lot more Mavlink support. So when that comes out, hopefully quite soon, then these things are going to be even more useful. So in this video, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about what MLRS is. Then let's have a chat about why it's different from Express LRS and which kind of pilot's probably going to get benefit from it. And also what advantages there are using MLRS with either something like Ardu Pilot, which uses Mavlink telemetry a lot, but also with iNav, but also particularly with iNav 8 when it gets all that Mavlink goodness. So let's start by looking at what MLRS actually is. Well, MLRS is an open source project which runs on either 2.4 gig, 915 or 868 megahertz, or even 433 megahertz. And it provides a high performance, long range radio link built around Mavlink, which is a beautiful bi-directional serial connection. And it also provides full remote control. So this is something that's going to snap in the back of a radio, just like an Express LRS module or something else, but it's going to give you a couple of other cool things. Now, as I already said, M stands for Mavlink. And Mavlink is one of those very, very capable, very mature protocols that's been around for quite a long time. The two versions of Mavlink that this stuff supports, the first is regular Mavlink, which we've all known and loved for a long time, particularly if you're flying Ardu Pilot. And you're also going to bump into, if you start using iNav 8.0, there's also something that's introduced called Mavlink X. Now, Mavlink X is a compressed version of the Mavlink protocol which also has some additional benefits as well. Now, MLRS offers plenty of full resolution channels, I'll get onto specifics in a minute, with 50 hertz update rates and serial data rates of about three to five kilobytes per second on a 2.4 gig system. The way it works against ExpressLRS is a little bit different. The packet sizes or the chunks of information that are sent to and from the radios on either end are significantly bigger than Express LRS, and that means that they can carry more data. Support all the common frequencies that we use. It's LoRa-based stuff, so that's not a big surprise. Lots of the radio systems that came out four or five years ago were when those kind of Semtech LoRa chips became available. Full duplex serial link with lots of data rate, lots of full-size RC channels, Open source, as I said at the beginning, which means it is actively developed. Version 1.3 as I'm recording this, but there's some new stuff coming in the future versions currently worked on, and it has a very rich feature set. So the channels that it provides, channels 1 to 8 are 11-bit resolution, with channels 1 to 4 having higher reliability. The next four channels, channels 9 to 12, have 8-bit resolution, and then channels 13 to 16, so it's a 16-channel configuration, have only three steps, with channels 13 and 14, again, having that higher reliability. So there should be easily enough, if you're plugging this into some kind of flight controller, to control all the pieces that you need, and to be able to control all the modes that you want to. It does support things like diversity and dual band, things like Gemini X in Express LRS is the closest thing I can think of that I've done a video on recently and it does provide huge range. One of the big reasons for that huge range is not only can you use 900 and 433 megahertz if you want to push the envelope but the same chip that's in the back of the radio that can 
transmit up to one watt. If this Matex stuff that I've got from 3DXR, I'll put links down below, it's also in the model side as well. And that's one of the big differences to Express LRS, the range of this thing and being able to get that bi-directional telemetry down is an awful lot bigger. And even though MLRS is a relatively new project, only version 1.3 right now, they have introduced some pretty cool stuff. They've improved the flow control for Mavlink. That gives a smoother and more robust data flow between the two ends. And they've also introduced something called Mavlink X, which is there around reduced packet loss and data compression to get the data down a little bit quicker. So one of the big questions that I had when I started looking at MLRS and trying to figure out what it was, was how does it stack up to Express LRS? Because they're both LoRa-based radio systems and they both talk CRSF to the radio to the module and also from the receiver to the flight controller. So what's different? And I think I'm starting to get a handle on this. Let's very quickly remind ourselves about what ELRS or Express LRS is. Express LRS has limited serial telemetry capabilities, let's be honest. It's really focused on really low latency radio control signals going from a radio up to the model. It's why they have these very high data rates using very small packages which give you very small latency. And every single packet that goes from the radio up to the model has those radio control bits and pieces in there. And then the bits that's left can be filled out with serial data. And that means for any messages of any decent size, those messages have to be cut up into lots of little small chunks in order to fit into each of these very, very small packages and then reconstituted at the other end, either in the receiver or within the flight controller or radio. Now, MLRS is built a little bit different. MLRS has a lower package rate with much larger packets that can carry a lot more data. The packet for MLRS is about 83 bytes, and that's about four times the size of Express LRS. And that does introduce a little bit more latency because you have to wait for that packet to be sent in order to then send another packet afterwards. So the radio control update speed is a little bit slower than Express LRS. However, that radio control channel information is only about 14 to 15 bytes of that 83 bytes. The rest of it is spare and available for use to send data. So MLRS uses the bandwidth and gives you a very high data rate. And part of that is because some of the data that you have to send every time you send a packet includes things like CRC and error checking. And that adds to the overall load that has to go over the waves. If you use bigger packets, then the amount of error checking and things that goes on is less. So the result is that you can actually get a lot of data over the link. And that's what you want if you're going to use something like Mavlink. The only downside with that, of course, is that if you lose a packet or don't receive a packet in MLRS, well, you've lost quite a chunk of data, and that can result in slightly lower range. Typically, 75 to 80% is what I'm hearing of a range of an Express LRS system set up in an identical way. However, as I mentioned in the introduction, Matic have released their hardware with up to one watt of telemetry power on the model. And that's a lot more than the Express LRS receivers have. Typically, up to 100, 150 milliwatts is what you're going to find on the Express LRS receiver. So you have an awful lot more power to push things an awful lot further if range is really important to you. So having a rough idea what the difference is between Express LRS and MLRS, when would you use one over the other? Well, the answer to this is actually relatively simple and straightforward from what I'm finding out. It kind of feels that if you are an Express LRS pilot, you're probably going to be an FPV pilot that's using that very low latency radio control information from the radio to the model, and you're happy to have some telemetry data coming back down, but you're happy to wait a little bit for it, and if packets are lost, then you know what? It's not the end of the world. So if you are regular FPV flying and you're not that bothered about telemetry and you want that lower latency, then Express LRS is probably the one for you. 
However, MLRS focuses a lot of support on ground station stuff, and that includes a radio control link from the radio, which this stuff would plug in the back, but you can also share the telemetry data via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to the laptop, and you can do this with Express LRS as well at the moment, and that means that you can have a ground control station sat by the side that you can not only monitor the flight and the settings, but you can also potentially send data back and change things too. And MLRS is actually a better system if you're into that kind of ground station use. Professional pilots would normally have some kind of telemetry radio, sick radios on their model that's just dedicated to getting the Mavlink telemetry back down to their ground station. And MLRS could be a great option for those pilots to lighten the load and make those setups cheaper. And it's going to be interesting for those FPV pilots who actually want to get into a little bit of ground station control too. So if I used MLRS with iNav or Ardu Pilot, what would I get? Well, let's talk a little bit about iNav first, because iNav is the slightly more complicated answer. Well, first of all, you get the ability to monitor the flight using a ground control station and change things on the fly with iNav, which is something that is a little bit trickier with other systems. Doable, but a lot more robust with MLRS. And it has support for MSP, which is the telemetry protocol that iNav talks, and also supports things like MSPX, which is a compressed version of MSP, similar to Mavlink X as well. It still works with the iNav telemetry widget and the in-flight connection to iNav configurator and it supports MSPRC. So there are lots of cool things that you can do. It's basically like Express LRS with all of that real goodness around it, particularly if you want to play with ground stations and use things like Mavlink 2. And Mavlink is coming in iNav 8.0 and that will provide a lot of additional functionality because it talks Mavlink. It will also then potentially allow you to monitor the flight using something like Mission Planner. That's kind of a new thing. It's going to be interesting to see how Mission Planner develops once it has to potentially also deal with Mavlink messages coming in from other systems, not just RD Pilot. Although you can change things while you're flying with iNav and iNav 8, uh, you do need to be a little bit careful. You're not able to upload missions when it's armed currently, although that will work in iNav 8. And save and reboot is blocked when the model is armed, because obviously you don't want to reboot when you're 300 feet up going at 30 miles an hour. It's probably going to be a bad thing. Be aware, though, that if you're looking at playing with this stuff, and this is the kind of stuff you're interested in, to play with the MSP stuff for iNav, then you're going to need version 1.3.0.2 of the MLRS project. It's flashed on your kit in order for that to work. In terms of Ardu Pilot, it's very, very similar to a lot of stuff that you've probably already seen. You could probably replace a separate radio control system and a separate set of telemetry radios with MLRS and use it as you would expect with the ground station running on the computer, probably mission planner, and then sharing the telemetry data from the radio via the backpack to that PC and have it all connected wirelessly and have the radio control link up to the model. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have seen some stuff about MLRS or maybe haven't heard of it before. All the links are above. Go and check out the detail. Hopefully now after watching this video, you'll know whether or not it's something that's of interest to you or not. And if it is, there's lots of additional reading you can do. Massive thank you again to Mark from the iNav development team who spent a long time with me helping kind of talk this through as well as read all of the documentation that was around. If you have any additional questions about this stuff, then please pop them down below. If there's enough interest, I'll hopefully try and do a follow-up video where I can address some of that stuff. But thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.